Peter Ebden, you are champion of the world 2002. This is, what, 20 years this year. To be back at the Crucible now this year for the first time since I retired is pretty incredible. And it's re always really special to be back here as world champion. You know, you walk in and, you know, you see your photo up there as a previous champion and amongst all those great champions. And, yeah, it, it's something very, very special. Um, it's lovely to be working with Karen and Jack and, and pass on my experience and, you know, hopefully see the difference and um, you know, be there with them you know, during the good times and when times are tough. That really means an awful lot to me. I'd worked really hard in 2002 and uh, you know, I wasn't blessed with the natural ability of somebody like Jack or Ronnie O'Sullivan or Neil Robertson or Sean Murphy, you know, with these sort of people. So I really had to train my mind to be really strong. And I think a lot of people don't understand. It's very, very gladiatorial out there. It's important to be able to take yourself and be where you want to be, be where you need to be mentally. And it's Peter Ebden who goes through to the second round. You know, you've really got to be strong in your mind um, to prepare yourself for when the chances come along. And fortunately, I, I took my chance when I needed to. I was you know, physically in pain at the end of the day and although I, I didn't know it at the time, the wear and tear for all the work that I'd been putting in ultimately would mean that you know, it would be the end of my career with a wear and tear in my neck. It's literally you against that guy and uh, you know, who's going to be the stronger? Are you going to take centre of the ring, so to speak? Are you going to be the strong guy or are you going to let him take control? So, you know, in my mind, I always had to be really, really strong. And, um, you know, no matter who I come up against, I always believed that I could win and I could make it really hard for them. And, you know, sometimes it worked more often than not, it didn't. But, uh, you know, I gave it my best. Matthew played so well in that match. It's, you know, I, something I'll never forget as long as I live for how well he played in that game. And, and, you know, I'm sure I've said it before, but my last impression was you know him pulling away from me and me trying to hang on to his coattails that's how well he played just the red and that would win the match in my own mind you know i was going to win it was as simple as that my focus and you know desire and motivation and you know, concentration, you know, the goal setting, I was doing all of that sort of stuff. But yeah, it was just huge. I was just, you know, ready for it. But if he misses this pink, he's out of the championship. Oh. Terrific shot. Well, that's the bravest shot that I've ever seen. I think I remember Steve Davis interviewing me in the semi-finals and he asked me what he, he, I thought my chances were. And I just said to him very simply and believed it that I wanted it more than anybody else, and I did. Peter Edmund goes through to the final. And you try to take it all in, but you don't really, because you're so focused. You know, I think everybody else is savouring the occasion and savouring the atmosphere, but, you know, as a player, you're just absolutely focused and determined on, on what you're doing. And, uh, you know, I was playing the greatest player of all time. If Stephen Hendry was an animal, he would be the biggest, baddest, meanest, great white shark ever. And that's how I visualised him as a player. And he was like that. He was an absolute killing machine. But it's a tremendous pot. Towards the end of the World Championship, you're playing on instinct and you're running on adrenaline. It was a question of digging deeper. It was like squeezing that sponge, come on, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more. And, and for me, that's what it was like. 89, Peter Ebden falls with 89 to take the last frame of the day and a 10-6 overnight lead. I remember starting the uh, tournament at 11 stone 8 and 17 days later I was 10 stone 3. It really was uh, a, a gruelling mental process to, to keep myself up for it all the time. So I'm thinking black, red, black, world champion. Oh. 
Stephen was always going to clear up because that's what he did. He did that his whole career. And then somehow I had to get myself ready for that final frame. 55. I made an unbelievable break, probably the most important break uh, of my career. Where's this white going? Oh. It's gone in. The, the shot that Stephen went in off, he was really, really unlucky because he tried to develop the black and bring the black away from the side cushion. You know, it, it was just my time, it was meant to be. It's in. It's over! Seven times world champion Stephen Hendry claps his hand and says, well done, Peter Ebden, you are the champion of the world. 2002. What a performance! It was like the uh, realization you know, of all the dream. It's all, all the hard work, all the persist, all the persistence, all the disappointment, all the frustration. You know, to actually, you know, uh, achieve what you always wanted to achieve. It's something incredibly special, and uh, I'll always be uh, very thankful for. It. My daughter Clarissa came out and then I hugged Clarissa and, and that actually sort of kept me grounded actually because I, I was sort of up there with the stars I think at the time. Yeah, I mean for me it was a once in a lifetime thing you know I wish it had been more but um, you know we can't be too greedy can we because it's not every day you become world champion in your sport you know your passion. Wow, very, very special memories for Peter, and uh, it's it's safe to look now. He was terribly magnanimous <laughs> to you, uh, but when you reflect on that absolutely epic final, what mm. are your abiding memories of it, Stephen? Um, you, you don't really remember too much about the final. I remember that black office spot that he missed, and and almost you know jumping off my seat to get to the table yeah. and clear up and, and and really thinking that's it I'm winning this now I'm thinking I just give me one chance on the inside I'm, I'm winning this now and, and I got a kind of a half chance didn't take it and as Peter said he made a magnificent break to win to win the final frame but um but yeah thank you to everyone for showing that <laughs> couldn't find one of mine this an anniversary you've had plenty no? you've had plenty <laughs> I, I actually I do remember that you were on record as saying not at the time but thinking you didn't think that Peter was going to be able to beat you over four no. sessions because you'd already played in a final before yeah and, and I'd beaten Ronnie in the semi-final um we had a bit of a grudge match and, and I played fantastic to win that semi-final and I honestly didn't think over four sessions Peter could beat me um I, but he did he did and and you know you, you Players win other tournaments, but to win the World Championship, you've got to be a proper player. And Peter was a proper player. He was indeed. And actually, just from a point of view of watching it, Steve, you've been involved in a final frame decider. But as a, as a pundit and as a presenter, was it, was, it was the first time that you'd have to sit there and actually live it in a different perspective. How did it change your view of a sport that you had given everyone so much pleasure with, and now you were sitting there watching else, other people go through it? Well, I think you just know what everybody's going through, and you know full well that anything can be missed. Uh, but it's always a shock when, you know, and when exactly the same as Stephen, when Peter missed that black, wow! Yeah, and we're sitting in the studio, we're kind of just um, living it. Yeah. And there's players, so it's great to be part of the team here because I don't play snooker anymore, but I come here and I live it as a, as a player again. And it's the juices all flow again. I would take issue with Peter Ebden's assessment of his own ability. I think he's incredibly talented. I think he does himself mm. down in there. He may not look as fluent as some of them, but I think his ability was one of the reasons why he beat Stephen and he got... To, you, some, you, don't, yeah. you, don't, you don't win the World Championship without having bundles of talent. It might not manifest itself in the same way as a Ronnie yeah. or a Jack Lazowski, but he's still got it all. Yeah, I think people tend to think if you're, if you're a fast player, that means you're talented, naturally talented, and other players aren't. Mm. You know, it's, it's nonsense, mm. complete nonsense. F for me, it, it affirmed the power of the mind. It was an extraordinary achievement, and uh, I will never forget it, I must be honest.